So this is the 24th Sunday in the ordinary time. And the church wants us to look at who is Christ, Christ's identity. Who is Christ to you? Who is Christ to me? Who is he? The first reading from the prophecy of Isaiah gave us a wonderful image of who Christ is because Isaiah painted an image of the suffering servant. And the key to understanding the reading of today, the first reading, will be going back to Isaiah chapter 42, where Isaiah made a wonderful image of what Christ is going to suffer for us. Christ's identity. Who is Christ to us? Who is Christ to you? Who is Christ to me? The gospel made it very clear to all of us who is Christ. And that gospel is divided into three parts. Three parts, the first, the second, and the third. We are going to look at those parts briefly. First is what I call the known. The second is the unknown. And the third is decision-making. The known, the unknown, and then decision-making. Time to make decision. That's the third part of that gospel. So let's start with the known. Christ, with his disciples, they entered into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked them a question. Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They gave answers. And those answers they gave will remind us of something. People have been talking about Christ. Yes, they have been talking about who this man is. And they are speaking this to the ears of the disciples. So the disciples, we are listening to them and hearing what image they have of Christ. Some said John the Baptist, others said Elijah, others said one of the prophets. Okay, now, when they responded that these we are the images that people have about Christ, John the Baptist, Elijah, and one of the prophets. Think of this. When people were telling the disciples that Jesus Christ is John the Baptist, what do you think that they will do or they will say? They will say, no, 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 he is not John the Baptist. Or no, 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 he is not Elijah. I believe they may, they may have said, no, you have the wrong image of who he is. And now Christ turned to the disciples and asked them this very personal question. And you, who do you say I am? And that question is very personal, is very deep. Christ is asking all of us that question. Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Christ. So that's why I said that the first part of the gospel is the known. Peter answered, you are the Christ. Good answer, but it is not enough. Good answer, but not enough. Now Christ began to tell them the unknown. So they know that he is the Christ, he is the anointed one, he is the Messiah. And then Christ began to tell them the unknown. And those unknown things are very difficult for them to accept. Christ said, I am the Christ who is going to suffer. I am the Christ who is going to be rejected. I am the Christ who is going to be killed. But then, I am the Christ 
who will also rise from the dead. Four things. He's going to suffer. He's going to be rejected. He's going to be killed. And he's going to rise again. And because they don't know about this of Christ, as I said, that part is the unknown. Peter was very mad and he began to rebuke Jesus. He called him aside and said, let this not happen to you. This will not happen to you. Don't say something like this. The unknown has been made known to them. And now, what is their reaction? Peter reacted. He wants to save Christ. He doesn't want Christ to go the way of the cross. He doesn't want him to suffer. He wants to protect him. Now for us, how do we react when we come to know of something that is true? It is true, but it is hard to believe. Christ revealed to them something that they never knew of him. I am the Christ who is going to suffer. I am the Christ who is going to be rejected. I am the Christ who is going to be killed. And I am the Christ who is going to rise from the dead. How do we react when a hard truth is said to us? Sometimes we have the image of, this is what I want to hear. If you don't tell me this, then I won't believe you. That's a wrong image. And Christ made it known to us today that we don't know everything. And this is part of what we have to know of him. He is the cross, the Christ of the cross. The Christ of the cross. Because that is why he came. And on the third part of that gospel is, now you have known me. The first part is the known, Christ. The second part is the unknown that had been revealed to them. Christ revealed who he is to them. Now you have known me. It is time for you to decide. Think about this. The disciples have a wonderful image of Christ as somebody who is going to come as a big ruler, come to save the people of Israel. He is the long-waited Messiah. And now he told them, whoever wishes to follow me, whoever wishes to follow me must have my identity. And what is the identity of Christ? Cross. Whoever wishes to follow me, you have to take up your own identity. And what is your own identity if you want to identify with me? Cross. Because he is the Christ of the cross. Whoever wishes to follow me, you have to deny yourself. You have to pick up your cross and then come after me. Time to decide. Christ wasn't begging them to stay. He told them, whoever. So this is an open invitation. It is left for you to decide. Now you said, I am the Christ. That is who I am. And now this is the part of me that you don't know. I have revealed those parts to you. Suffering Christ. Rejected Christ. Christ that will die. And Christ that will rise again. Now, make the decision for yourselves. Of course, the disciples continued to follow him with faith, with trust. And that's exactly what St. James tells us. That our faith should be a living faith and not a dead faith. Our faith should be a living faith and not a dead faith. So, there is something like a dead faith. That's what St. James is telling us. Faith will be dead if it is not put into action. The only way that we know that we have faith is when we put our faith into action. And I will always say this to myself and to the people that I have met. I will tell them that you don't have faith until your faith is tested. 
You don't have faith until your faith is challenged. So if everything is going on well for you and then you are just jubilating, everything is just going on the way you want it, fine. But until your faith is tested, that is the only way you can know that you have faith. Just look at what happened to the disciples. Christ told them that this is who I am. Suffering Christ, rejected Christ, Christ that will be killed, and Christ that will rise again. Their faith was really tested. But they stood firm. They continued following Christ. So James tells us today that our faith can only be seen by our good work. So we cannot say that we have faith if we can't show it by our good work. So my dear friends in Christ, we have known who Christ is and we have had personal experience with our Lord Jesus Christ. We have had some deep personal experience with our Lord Jesus Christ. Think about those experiences that you had with Christ. Think about those experiences that you had with Christ and that will define your relationship with him. You, who do you say I am? We have to answer that question. And that is what we have to think about this week. Who do you say I am? Christ is asking us this question. May the good Lord bless you and bless these words in your hearts. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you.